Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming here today uh, to celebrate John's life. I would invite us to stand and face towards the back. And as we gather together today, we gather in Christ's name, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, John died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. And I now would invite us to join in our opening song. My brothers and sisters, let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant John, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And I would now invite us to be seated as we listen to God's Word.
A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For if before men indeed they be punished, it is their hope full of immortality. Chastise a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and shall dart about as sparks through rubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise also with us, with Jesus, and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. Therefore, we are not discouraged. Rather, although our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to what is seen, but to what is unseen. For what is seen is transistory, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. The word of the Lord. I would now invite us to stand. May the Lord be in your heart and your lips and may you proclaim his holy gospel worthily and well. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man had done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus perturbed again came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take the stone away. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For all of those who are present today, in spirit or in person, 
please know of my heartfelt prayers and all of the parishioners and all of us here at Sacred Heart. I know this is not an ideal time. I know this is not how we envisioned life to go. But in the midst of all this, we are called to pray. We're called to believe and have hope and have trust, just like John did throughout his life. So please know of my sincere prayers and condolences to you in this time. John was a, was a beautiful, he was a great man. And he'll be sorely missed in this parish community now. I didn't have a long time to get to know John. And I'm especially sorry for that right now. But every time I did see him in church or in the community, there's one thing that always stood out, and that was he always had a smile on his face. He was always happy. I never saw him sad or upset. And all of our hearts are broken today. But it's that smile that should be on our hearts, on our, on our lives, knowing that John is in a better place. He is with God. He is where he ultimately desired to be right now. He's celebrating right now in heaven. In our gospel today, Lazarus was dead. And there was a dark cloud that was hanging over the hearts of all those in our reading today upon uh, Martha and Mary. Their family, it had been, been robbed by this death. Their hearts were broken like, like ours are today. And like Martha and Mary, we're grieving. We're grieving the loss of John. And to us in our grief, Jesus comes to us, just as he did to Martha, with his truth, with his love. And he says to us, I am the resurrection and the life. We feel sorrow at the loss of John, yes. But we do not grieve like we have no hope because we know Jesus is raised from the dead and raises us too from the dead. We know that John spent his life in the Lord's service, whether it was walking around or being at Mass or uplifting people or even being in the armed services, giving his life for our country. Therefore, although we grieve, we have hope. We know he is with the Lord. We know that we will see him again one day. John believed in him. Therefore, although he has died, he still lives. He lives now more fully, more gloriously than he has ever lived before. He is with Christ and is at home where he can continue to live forever in a garden more fuller, more beautiful than we have ever experienced. In these times of grief and loss, our hope, it's grounded on the truth of Christ. And as the dark cloud of grief, as it hangs over all of us, I remind you of the words of Jesus today. I point you to the cross and the empty tomb. Like Martha and Mary, we grieve. We're grieving the loss of John. We're grieving our brother in Christ. And in our grief, Jesus comes, just as he did to Martha. But he also comes, not only with his presence, but with his tears. And two times in scriptures, Jesus weeps. When he looked over Jerusalem, he wept for the nation. And he weeps today over a friend's grave. He wept for those who grieve. And today, as we mourn for John's loss, Jesus weeps with us. He's deeply moved to see our hearts broken with grief. He's not distant and uncaring. And today, as we grieve the loss of John, this truth that gives us hope and his tears, it gives us comfort. As we journey with grief in these days ahead, let us again and again remember this incredible moment at Bethany. But now for John, there is no more pain, no more sadness, no more separation from those you miss. He is rejoicing now, and we rejoice with him. So may you rest in peace, John. We remember you now and we await your loving presence again one day soon. May your soul and all the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God 
Rest in peace. My brothers and sisters, I would now invite us to stand. Jesus Christ has risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where He intercedes for His church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in Him, we now join our prayers to His. Our response to these prayers will be, Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, John received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. The Lord's hear our prayer. Our brother was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into your heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. The Lord's hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. We pray for the deceased members of the Feller and Fret families. Grant them all an everlasting place with your Son. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The family and friends of John seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that comes from grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother John. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brother. Cleanse him of his sins and grant him the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I would now invite us to be seated as we prepare our altar.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant John, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your Son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him, the hope of blessed resurrection is dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earth we dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down the Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, He took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, John, 
whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. I would now invite us to stand. At the Savior's command, and informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. With a simple gesture or a bow, let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. I would now invite us to either kneel or be seated again. And for communion today, um, I'll be in the middle aisle on this side, and Deacon Greg will be in the middle aisle on this side. Uh, I would kindly ask all those who are in the, in the uh, sides to, to filter on in, if that's okay, uh, and come down the center and off to the sides. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that You should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
I would now invite us to stand. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of His body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant John, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through Him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. On behalf of Dorothy and the entire family, I want to thank all of you for coming here to celebrate John's life today. Uh, thank you for your witness. Thank you for your faith. And thank you for sharing in his life. Uh, immediately after the service, we're going to head to the uh, Catholic Church in Sugar Creek for the burial, the cemetery there. Uh, everyone's welcome to come if you desire. Uh, I believe we're going to take the route all the way to Preston and then up to uh, Goose Lake. And then, uh, well, about halfway to Goose Lake, then we'll take uh, a right there. So uh, we're taking, the, the, gra we're taking the, uh, the, the pavement all the way there. But uh, you're welcome to, to come to Sugar Creek if you, if you desire for the, uh, for the burial for John. But again, thank you for coming. And before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother John in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, you will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you have bestowed in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and all are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace.
Let us take our brother to his place of rest.